Jesus was standing on the promises of God. Jesus knew, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Jesus didn't have to fear the cross. Jesus didn't have to fear the Roman soldiers. Jesus didn't have to fear Peter turning on him and Judas betraying him and the uh, the disciples running away from him, scared because of association. Jesus was standing on the promises of God. Jesus knew that when he left heaven and was born of the Virgin Mary and he lived a perfect life and he went through all that he went through and he went through the week, the passion week of suffering, where he said, not my will, but thy will. He knew the promise on the other side was resurrection. He knew on the other side was a throne. He knew on the other side was an iron scepter to rule the nations. He knew that God Almighty would take his soul and put it back in his body and he'd be resurrected and ascended back up to heaven. And there's still another promise that he's coming back again. I tell you today, Christian, you may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, but if you'll stand on the promises of God that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. Wait a second. Your son just died. How do you have peace? Your wife just died. How do you have peace? Job, you lost everything. How is it that you're keeping it together? Because I have the peace that passes all understanding because I have a God that does not fail. I have a God that does not sway. I have a God that does not vary. I have a God that does not, does not act by his emotion. God says, these are my words. I will magnify my word above my name. He will give you a brook in the way. Hey, God can use anybody. God can use anybody who will say, Joshua 1.8. And what David said in the whole chapter of 119, thy statutes, thy laws, thy commands, thy testimonies, thy precepts. I want to obey those. I want to live in the confines of this book and I don't want to go anywhere else. We just sang it. A tent or a cottage, why should I care? They're building a palace for me over there. The best palaces come with all the greatest furnishings if you live in the confines of this book. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. He said the same thing in Deuteronomy 20. He said, when you rise up in the morning, teach your kids. When you go to bed at night, teach your kids. Use your fingers, use your mouth, use your toes, use your hands, use your billboards, use your whiteboards, use your chalkboards, use your mouth, use your voice to tell your kids these commands and these precepts. And when you go out, when you come in, teach your kids, teach the next generation. And the greatest mistake that America has made was taking God out of school. Why? Because the communists knew we couldn't get America with a war, so we'll get them with ideology. And to get them with ideology, we got to get rid of their idol, and their idol is God. We got to get rid of God. Get rid of God and put in us. And that's what happens to our school. Our schools have been infected. Um, uh, but I, I'm not going to be a president. I'm not going to be a senator. I'm not going to be an ambassador. I'm not going to be any of those. I'm, I, I'm an ambassador for Christ. That, that's, well, that's what I am. That's what I'm going to be. Uh, so what is my job to do that? Listen, all great countries that have forgotten God have fallen, but the individual that has not forgotten God will prosper. Jeremiah was locked up in prison buying land when it was being besieged by Babylon. When his land was being taken, when it was being consumed, he was in prison saying, hey, go get the money that I have and go buy this land. Christians can prosper even in a wicked nation if we obey and live in the confines of that book. What is m my response? Responsibility as a Christian, what do I do? I've got to be a brook in the way. You say, a brook in the way? Yes, because my brothers and my sisters are suffering. You're going through a week of suffering. You're having your passion week. You may be in a season that you feel like a Job. You may be in a season where you feel like, man, I'm down and out. What you need is, is another Christian who's a brook in the way. But I remember captivating PNC Bank by gunpoint. No, at a, 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 in, in New Haven. A conversation broke out. And I just was talking about my principles. And I'm talking the tellers, the a fella in the office coming out and, and seven or eight people standing around. Are we just talking principles? Principles, principles. But anytime I get a conversation with somebody, I want to interject the gospel. Yesterday I was getting my hair cut. And this guy, he's right online. I mean, he swears and whatnot. He, and, and we're talking. And anything and everything is like, you know, but God, but Jesus, but church. It's all church oriented. It's all Jesus oriented. It's all what's going to happen. He's like, yeah, man, that's exactly right. And, and the guy next to him is listening. I know he's listening. They're not over there having a conversation. I'm talking loud. Uh, but I was talking to this guy, God, God, Jesus, Jesus, Savior, heaven, hell. Why? Because that guy's got a soul and he's going to go to hell. And I need to be a brook in the way. I need to be a brook in the way. Scott Carter was a brook in the way for Keith Rollins. A brook in the way. Why? Talking about church, talking about Jesus, talking about heaven. Well, I'm not a really good soul winner, but just talk to talk and walk to talk. They say that your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. But back it up with your words. Back it up.